Dear friends, let me uh, give uh, brief information regarding today's meeting. Uh, I will share a few slides. Okay, dear friends, uh, welcome to our second meeting, uh, best practices during UBI advocacy. Uh, these meetings are designed for ECI UBI 2020 and also for UBI moment. Uh, they are being held on third Mondays of each month at Central European time, 20 o'clock, 8 p.m. Uh, okay, the first meeting uh, was on 19th of October last month, and our guest was Michele Giannella from Italy, and uh, his topic was social media campaigning for UBI. It was a very interesting meeting and the recordings are available uh, at YouTube. I will share in the chat box too, uh, the link of the video recordings. Uh, but today's session, uh, we have a very uh, interesting topic too and a very distinguished guest, our dear friend Enno Schmidt. Uh, he's a research assistant of the Götz Werner Chair at the University of Freiburg, Freiburg Germany. And we will hear from him uh, the presentation uh, entitled Lessons learned from Swiss referendum for UBI. Okay, dear Anno, word is yours. Dear Anno, dear Anno, please unmute yourself. I'm sorry. Now it's okay. Ah, I was muted. Uh, no, now it's okay. Again, huh? Well. What I said is that um, I will talk a little bit about my experiences of this different campaign in Switzerland, but I would prefer that, that you can ask also ask in between because I think it's more exciting. It's better if your specific questions are in this um, group and, and discussion so that it is that you benefit more from it. Otherwise, I can tell stories hours and hours, but it would be good to have your questions because for working on it you have specific uh, goals and, and experiences yourself so can we do it in a way that people can talk in between ali uh yes and uh, it's possible right now uh i am muted myself too i mean in case any friends would like yeah. to ask questions yeah. they should unmute themselves yeah, they, they sh uh, can raise the hand and see it as a moderator. Right? Uh, bo yeah, both possible. Okay. So, um, first, I would say some words about what a People's Initiative and um, Referendum is, because um, it's obviously, and everybody thinks he's knowing it, but this is not an opinion poll, uh, this is not a survey, this is real and this is on the background on changing the, uh, uh, the law the constitution of the country so this is not such a game like in many other countries where you can have petitions saying please but this is legally binding and in some way i think the referendum we have had in switzerland is a real pilot project of unconditional basic income because it takes the topic serious, it does not test people like parts of a machine, whether they run good or bad, if you change the electricity by an unconditional basic income. So I think it is a real test, it was a real pilot project test, more than others, because that walked the path of democracy, and democracy for me is in a way the same idea, like an unconditional basic income, it's just another perspective from another direction. So that was the situation in Central Europe that we have their democracy where the people really believes in and know what democracy is. So that they know it's not just about the result, it's not just um, to, to, to win, it is an ongoing educational process. New ideas are discussed and discussed in an entire society. So this is the first what I want to point out that this is not to argue in front of left-wing people, academics or whatever. You have to have in mind the whole of the society and that means you cannot argue with arguments that are specifically targeted to the applause 
of a section of the society. Otherwise, you all you immediately have um, enemies on the other side. Second point was that we didn't want to come to close contact with political parties. So first, it is a behavior of some people to, to strive to be important by becoming politicians on your side. That's not what we wanted because this is not for politicians, this is not for political parties, this is for the population, for the, uh, the society which is a sovereign in a democracy. And if you have the Green Party on your side, you have another party against you immediately. You are in that game of partisan conflicts. So that is why we didn't look so much for, um, for, for political parties. And we have had no um, associations or worker unions or something like that on our side. It was really a movement from the bottom up, a grassroots movement from private people. So the beginning was, and I tell that because I think it is somehow important and interesting that Daniel Henny and me uh, met each other. He's from Basel, I was uh, living in Germany that time. And we agreed about so many things you cannot learn. You have it in your heart, you have it in your biography. And because we both came to the point to decide basic income is the most important tool in our times now because it comes from freedom. It doesn't come from one has the idea and the other is joining in, but it comes from a specific moment in the biography of both of us that gave the strength. And they are an artist, I'm an artist, and um, founder of um, um, enterprises and so on and so on. And he is more an entrepreneur, his strengths and cap uh, capabilities. So I think this was a good couple. But what I want to point out is to start an initiative or to have a strong movement needs that it is not just that people join in because they are excited by the idea or they like to be there it has to be deeper and it has to be that this is the biography of both of them and another point for me important to mention is that we focused from the beginning on on beauty and generosity so because the idea of an unconditional basic income is not the old um, claim of uh, doing good for the poor is not this self understanding of we are the good one because we are not the rich one it is not um this old behavior and it's not blaming others so we preferred and always try to do to have a form of the website of articles that they are well written that they are beauty and that the events we made are made by generosity. So that the whole, and that is from related to art, the whole image you gave, not only the content, not only the intellectual content, but also everything around that is one. And it proves what it is only everything fits together. So if you have a good intellectual idea, but in, uh, in, an, in an ugly way presented, that's not trustworthy. So we are in a time thing, we can say everything, but important is that is proved by the form, whether, whether it is a whole thing, not only an idea, a thought, um, but also the image, the way it is presented is important. And it was important for me always to have a bright, atmosphere and always a little bit a taste of humor in it so that it doesn't become an ideology that it doesn't become a totalitarian uh, we have the good idea you have to believe it that we are on the same level with those who are the audience so that we are not the message bringer in an old uh, way but that 
we want it to be attractive for the people so that this is a more attractive way of living thinking it's more exciting it's just better it's not good because we are morally the better people or because this is so important you have to believe it and even not to say um you have to step in my thoughts so for example when i made the film basic income and cultural impulse which was very um, impactful it was not so important for me that people will understand the idea of an unconditional basic income by looking at it but that the people felt understood by the idea of an unconditional basic income so to think it the other way around not not um, pulling people inside of what you love but delivering people something that strengthen them and give them the feeling that they can be like they are that they are okay like they are and you know as well as me so many people are educated and used not to believe in what they think what they feel they think this is prohibited that it should be different and that starts in kindergarten and then in school and so on so to to bring up that feeling that it is okay how i am those things to strengthen people to encourage people to be as they are and to have their perceptions and to think themselves has been um, the most important point for me so when we started this initiative and nobody talked about a basic income at that time in switzerland we started with a website and as i said we tried to have well written texts we always thought about the customer not just me what's important for me but also how can we entertain the people how can it be um, appealing for them how can it be interesting for them what are the questions of the people so to to look to the audience to serve them and because the website was in a way yeah it was beauty it was interesting I started with making films, what was very new at that time, there has been no film about basic income and it was the beginning of YouTube time. So by this also to bring in, in something sensitive and emotional, um, brought up a specific success and we have had the biggest events at that time in Basel and an advantage, and that is, I think it's important for all campaigns or initiatives was that we have had a huge huge house in the middle of Basel called Unternehmen Mitte, Enterprise Mitte. It's the biggest coffee house in Switzerland and there are also studios for artists and agencies and apartments and physicians are there and a bank is, is there, an alternative bank. So many different activities and people, huge huge house and always a place for events and meetings and conferences, a headquarter, which was always a way available for us so that we have had a center. Um, the beginning of our initiative was not directly focused on starting as far as possible people's initiative. Um, we always looked what is happening, what comes to us so that we don't left the reality by any idea what has to be done but always looking what is life doing and first it's it was needed to spread the idea to have more and more people a little a little bit involved and and interested in it not just starting something in an environment that is not prepared so we first prepared that and then after i made that film and it was published people came to us saying um, they think it's time to start a people's initiative. So when they came and asked for it, we started the people initiative. I think for many campaigns or projects and so on um, fail because they don't look enough for what is in the environment, how far they are. And one point, maybe it sounds very private or personal, but I experienced that very important. Don't mix up you yourself with the greatness of the idea you are arguing for. So that you don't mix up yourself by the greatness and beauty and importance of, for example, UBI, 
but you always have to know that's what I say. I'm just Schmidt. I'm just delivering this idea. I'm 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 working for it. I'm serving the people. So and some people mix up themselves with the with the importance and and, and the huge uh, meaning of, of the idea, and then they become very disappointed when it does not come to the success they desired. So and often this is the reason why civil civil movements destroy themselves. And another reason is if you are not aware that in the beginning everybody is a friend of you. The team, all people are fine with each other, but when it comes to some importance, in particular when the medium, the medias, the TV picks up one guy as a hero and the others are left in the shadow and all that stuff, or when there is not only small amounts of money, when it comes to importance, I experienced that not only in our initiative and campaign, but also in others, always social tensions arise. So if it's not just our team, more or less in the backyard, more or less in our private environment, if it becomes public, if, become, if, if forces are focused on it, there is always a social struggle, social tensions arise, that it is a question who is who, and so on. And I have no solution for that, but it's important to be aware of that, to not ignore it. Some people ignore it. So to know it will become a social work and social problems and all that stuff, struggle and, and everything when it comes to importance, because people are not used to stay in the in the spotlights and to, to, to be in the medias and so on. They are used to be in other circumstances and fine. This is a danger that was also for us a point. Um, and we tried to solve it by letting people do what they want to do. So one important point is if you have such an initiative and it becomes strong and, 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 and um, it attracts awareness from the media and the public. Many people come to you telling you, oh, I have the best idea, you have to do it like that. You should do it in that way. You should do that. First, it was important to see we have no time. We cannot meet everybody who is writing or calling or coming. Because there are so many, there are so many things to do. We have to be efficient, and we have to look what is significant and what not. And the other thing that people are always telling you what you have to do better. The answer of us always then was to say, if you have a good idea, do it yourself. Look if that gains attraction. Look if people join you, and then do it. But don't tell us what to do. And that was the same inside the team that we realized. So when it came to the collection of signatures, for example, and I will tell a little bit more about that, um, and people started talking with we should, or you should, or something like that. We always said, okay, this is for the paper basket. It's only interesting that people do things. And if they do it, if you have an idea, do it and look what the reactions are, how successful this is. And if it is, if you believe so hardly in the idea, you have to do it and look what happens. So that, that you yourself can stay with the initiative and stay with your um, skills and capacities to do the things you are believing in and not always being uh, distracted by what other people think you should do. So back to the beginning of the People's Initiative. In Switzerland, I have to hand in um, a paper written on what the people are voting about. And this text written there has to be on that paper that you give the people to sign. And we have had luck that uh, Oswald Sick joined our group, and Oswald Sick is 
former vice chancellor of Switzerland and former speaker of the government. And he is a political uh, profi and wrote a very brief, simple text. So I tried to type it in here in the chat, but there was an error, it's, it's twice. And you have to hand in that. And if it is not against national law, or if it's not racism or something like that, it gets the approval and you can start the people's initiative. So in Switzerland, the, those who have to decide about it don't look to the content so much only if that is against basic rules of society. Then, if you get the approval, you have 18 month time to collect at least 100,000 signatures of um, um, uh, of uh, the, from Switzerland who have the right to vote, citizens with the right to vote. And you have to do it on the streets, in the public, not digital, not in the internet, not by letters. And that means you have to go outside to, to the people, stay there, and you can imagine how that feels if you are staying there with, let's say, a poster and your papers for signatures with this message, unconditional basic income, and people are looking to you and thinking, my God, what is, what is he doing there? So it needed a time to, to get some, some experiences how to deal with people on the streets. And at least uh, at the end, we collected 126,000 valid signatures but that means there has been a half of a million talks with people directly and over a million people who encountered us and this idea and have had the decision about the faith of switzerland in their hands for a brief moment so this work to be on the streets to have this personal contact face to face also means um, to confront people and to give the opportunity to people to talk about. This is for me an advantage um, compared to a digital um, signature campaign like the European campaign now. To have this contact and to have this one-to-one, -one, face to face, same eye level conversations with people, and you experience a lot of yourself and also of the people. So important um, for me was in this collecting signatures when we started and thought, well, this is such a good idea. People will sign it, no problem, but they didn't. So it was a problem that not enough people signed the lists. And we, we looked and computed how, how much do we need every day to, to reach the end. To get this, to get this 100,000, it was not enough. And what's to do now? And then um, young people came, and in particular the young lady, a dancer, and they they said it has to be fun, you know, it has to be more a party. It it does not have to be such an effort, such a uh, effortful, dusty work to gain to, to get the signatures it has to be the other way around it has to be achievable goals sporty um, teams and and collection of signatures it has to be party after that there are awards of those who got the most signatures at that day or week so it has to become sporty and a friendly competition and always always having fests, having meetings and having party. And by this, so to go away from, we have one year time now, one year is left and we need so many signatures and so on, what burdens you, what depresses you, to, to turn it around and say, okay, we, have, we want to, to achieve the goal in one week or tomorrow. And we build teams in the different cities of Switzerland and they, have a competition who gets the most signatures and so it becomes 
vibrant. It, 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 it gets a momentum. It was sporty and like an enterprise. That was important for me how to split off the long-term way for a goal to achieve goals, little small steps, and always to have this, yeah, this atmosphere of its joy. It's a competition in a good way, and and not to have this understanding of wow, well, what a heavy work. By this, we achieved the signatures. So it was more or less a game, it was more or less play. And that made that we always have been in a good mood and we could spread the good mood. We could spread an understanding of unconditional basic income, which again is the better way to live. More exciting, more attractive to do this than anything else. Not just because the idea is so valuable, but because the life is more exciting. Um, then you have, when we have had these signatures, and by this, um, the People's Initiative was successful. That means that um, the referendum is legally binding, come up. Um, yeah, I think you need some, some luck. And we have had it because um, on the economic forum in Davos in Switzerland at that time when 2016 we knew okay now the referendum will come in summer and then at that important forum they discussed basic income and that was in the newspaper and there was an article um, from, from, from them that democracy is in danger without an unconditional basic income all that things so that helps a lot and the government, so in Switzerland, you can write a part of a booklet, and the government is writing a part of a booklet about this vote um, for an unconditional basic income. Both parties can write why they are in favor or why they are against. And the government wrote a calculation of that basic income that it will cost, I don't know, some hundred um, billions. And then we could, we could argue that this calculation is wrong. And they changed it and said, okay, okay, it's just 30 billion. And that was a good thing for the medias because it proved that the government don't know how to calculate it and we knew it. Um, so there are some things that work for us randomly, but um, important. And I think, for us, it was important to have pictures. For me, primarily um, focused not so much on uh, having intellectual discussions, also not so much to argue against. That's what we, yeah, you have to do it sometimes, but we prefer not to do it so much. Because there is a there is something like a law or a, a rule. So if you set a message, then it's set. And other people came after you later, arguing against. They are the second or third or whatever. So media work is to set information, messages, whether they are so totally true or not, and then it's done. Then there is something. There is a there is a step, there's a profile. Others who are against that have less chances to gain to, to attract people's awareness. The other way around, if you are arguing against people and they did the first step, you are the weak one. So you can lead a campaign by setting images, setting statements. So bring messages at, at, at first hand. You are the first one. And then the others come behind you. But the public awareness is mostly only by this first message. So whether it's wrong or right. And we focus um, mainly on performances and images because people understand things not just with their brain. They understand it by colors, by 
um, yeah, by performances, by movement, by dancing, by, by all that stuff. So in real, people are much more than just listening to an idea. They want to see it. For example, when we dropped out this 8 million coins on the Federal Square in Bern, the capital of Switzerland, well, this was not, not, not really the right picture for an unconditional basic income. You can, you can criticize it, but it was a huge image. It was an archetype. It was gold, a mountain of gold, golden coins. It was a fairy tale of the dragon and the virgin and the gold and all that stuff. It was an arch archetype image that was spread around the world. So when we made the biggest poster of the world, uh, Guinness World Record, we can say, what a stupid idea. But that was reported globally because of this simple um, effects and, and tools, Guinness World Record, biggest poster. And then this sentence, what would you do if your income were taken care of? So we used in a way, simple archetypes, archetypal images. And that, I think, was the biggest success of campaign. The one is, it was a discussion in the entire society, the whole population, not only a section. Second, it was spread globally, and this reputation of Switzerland, that they can deal with money, that they are profound and serious, um, gave a momentum in so many other countries to take this idea serious. So before it was more or less for many people a left-wing idea, because people didn't understand that basic income is not social benefit, but then Switzerland was voting about it, and that was astonishing, surprising. And we deal with all these aspects. So finally, our campaign was a global campaign, and we knew it. It was not just Switzerland. It was to push the idea globally by this gift of direct democracy, where the people in Switzerland fought for, and they have it, and they have a democratic understanding. And with this reputation of, the, of that country where all the money is, <laughs> you know, where all the taxes are. And that was a funny story when the Russian TV reported about it, the first was, well, we have to look what is with our money in Switzerland. They drop it to the pavement. They have too much and that's our money. So such funny stories uh, arise. What I want to say with that is you need social competence, social tensions and social struggle is a huge, huge topic. We try to solve it by letting to do what they want to do by their own strength. My insight is that for a strong campaign, you need that not only ideas come together, interests, but biographies. You have to live for it. In other words, you have to die for it. And it needs to be the right, the right moment in the time of your life and the life of the other. That makes it strong. And you have to respect the initiatives, the strengths and power of the people from their own initiatives. So that you have people with self-esteem and the feeling they do what they really want. They don't do what you set them as a rule, how to talk about basic income and so on. No, never. We never did that. We never said there's a, a common rule of speech or a common rule of images. Many things happened we didn't agree with, but we let it go. And in particular in Switzerland, even if it's such a tiny little country, you have so different areas. So the people in, in West Switzerland, the Romani, French-speaking part, did a different campaign. Those in Zurich and we in Basel first were very close together, but then more split off and agreed that we don't argue against each other, but do what everybody can do best. And so there are different moods, different cultures, even in this small little country. And we let all of them do what they want to do. 
And I think this is better than to bring everybody together and to say, oh, we have to have one common um, talk, one common language. We have to be focused on the same by our rules. No, we have to be focused on the non-conditional basic income, how, however you are campaigning for it. Well, these are some experiences, but I think now it's better to have your questions. Uh, dear Anna, thank you very much. In fact, uh, our dear friend Diana Blackwell, Blackwell was raising her hand. Uh, Diana? Uh, yes, please. hi, thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, again, I'm Diana Blackwell from um, Harlem, New York in the USA. And I am really interested because uh, he is working with us on a small project in New York. But things I heard today, I hadn't heard before. And because the world, not only the United States, is going through a transitory period with this COVID, it is so important to understand how, what is the compelling uh, initiative that you use to get people interested? I know you said that you allow people to do their own thing, but what did you really feed them to get them started in doing the work? Well, mostly really because it was attractive for them to join in. Mostly because it was exciting. You know, the, the, the biggest gift what we all have and never should forget is the idea of an unconditional basic income. This is a huge, huge gift and that is what people are interested in. And if you give people the opportunity to do something, they do it. So the, the bad, bad thing in Germany is you cannot do things. You can have pilot projects and so on. But in Switzerland, you have this huge opportunity, and you in New York have the same, to say, okay, we make a people's initiative. We go to a referendum. And then people can do something. So the, the, the very, very bad thing is that many people are for non-conditional basic income but can't do anything for it. And I want to, to create let's say, um, jobs, workplacing for the people that they can do something. You want to do something. You want to experience yourself in a social community with other people to do something. And this opportunity of direct democracy to make it to states affair, to have a people's initiative and referendum, that was a huge advantage of Switzerland and the whole of Europe. So if you can give people something where they can change the world, where, where they, can, they can join a vision by doing things, creating things, bringing something up, having a goal, like we want to have the vote, then people join. If you, have, you haven't that, yeah, then it's just talking. So this is the big advantage by direct democracy in this case, that you can bring your idea to the ears of everybody in the country and you can change the constitution you know that people want to do things that is for me the important point why i supported the political party basic income in germany not because i think they are successful but give people opportunities to move their hands their brain to do things people want to do things and then of course you need a little bit of money because first you need an income then you can work uh, dear Anu, two more questions are coming. Uh, dear Janus and uh, dear Valeria afterwards. First, Janus. Uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, thank, uh, thanks uh, to Enumit. Uh, um, but uh, I, I, I have uh, uh, such a, a question. Uh, uh, I, I, I follow, uh, uh, of course, uh, all the pr uh, processed uh, almost all the process uh, of uh, this uh, uh, Swiss referendum and uh, mm, uh, uh, what I have seen uh, you talk uh, then uh, always of uh, um, uh, particular uh, um, uh, amounts of the UBI uh, to uh, 2,500 uh, francs uh, and uh, uh, for adults and uh, uh, mm. the smaller uh, amount was uh, uh, for children. You always talked about uh, those amounts 
and uh, after after the referendum um, uh, many people who were against they told that uh, the amounts are uh, too big um, uh, what do you think uh, was it uh, uh, the right way uh, uh, to explain the uh, idea of uh, the UBI idea of the referendum um, uh, talk uh, always about uh, one uh, uh, particular amount. Uh, uh, was it the right way or was it a rather uh, uh, tactical, uh, tactical mistake? Um, I argue that uh, it was uh, uh, some kind of mistake. But so, yeah. uh, you, can, you, can, you can say me, no, Janus, you are not right. Janus, first uh, I think for that question, may uh, I answer? Uh, dear, yeah, no, yeah. Uh, dear, no, if you kindly agree, let's take the questions from dear Valeria and M Michael too, so maybe you can answer three together. Okay, if you were in your mind, okay. Uh, Valeria? Well, uh, I wrote my question. Actually, yeah. it was, uh, uh, again, you know, hello. Uh, Anna knows uh, I always speak about uh, uh, women in the movement and how important they are. And uh, if uh, maybe it's a uh, very important difference about social tension and so on, if uh, there is uh, a lot of uh, women. May I say something? You know, one of our activists, he wrote to me, don't ask men to sign. They just quarrel all the time. Just ask women and they will sign. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to, <laughs> to, to write it I will down. say something. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Valeria. And Mikhail? Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, please. Okay, thank you. So, I hope it's not trivial, but uh, here's my question. A couple of days ago, I talked with a friend who is a, a relatively high executive in a bank about the... Um, about the basic income initiative. I know that a lot of people even, even in the financial sector are supporting this idea. So I, so, so I asked their, uh, how about spreading the idea into among your colleagues and uh, in, in hope that your firm will take an official position in support of it. And she say, well, I can advocate for that, but I need a sort of a selling point. Uh, the, the company needs to feel that she has a, uh, an advantage in taking a, a public stance in favor of a basic income. So as a citizens of a country that, uh, um, of a particularly rich country, one filled with banks and consultancy firm, do you have a particularly effective uh, selling point in presenting UBI to this kind of realities of this kind of economic players? You, uh, Michael, Michael, you mean uh, for bankers? For bankers, or consultancy firms, okay. uh, top tier yeah. executive, uh, this kind of world. I mean, yeah. not people who would be immediate beneficiaries. Yeah. Um, thank you for your questions. I try to have it in mind. And let me start with Janus' questions, please. Um, this is a very important question because we didn't talk about 2,500 Swiss francs. It was written in a book of from from two members of our team they wrote a book and they said just for example just to have a number we make this calculation with 2500 francs for adults and 625 for minors it was just an example in the book but then listen this is what happens with medias always media took up these numbers and people are keen on having a number they always ask him, how high is it? What is the number, the number? You can say, if people cannot think, they want to calculate. If people cannot think by themselves, they want to computer, they want numbers. You know, then you are away from your inner soul and you can deal with nothing. So it was, it was not that he spread it, the media spread it. And we always said, we, we always avoided with all strength to talk about a specific number. We did everything we can to avoid to talk about numbers because if you have a number, people don't discuss the idea, don't discuss anything. They are just talking about numbers. 
The other thing is 2,500 Swiss francs was, um, was, um, in, uh, was, was translated in, for example, uh, 1,400 US dollars. So this stupid stuff, you know, this is the exchange rate. You have to have the purchasing power. People in Switzerland said, 2,500 Swiss francs, do you want to make us poor? This is much less. You know, the argument against the number was, it is too, it is too little. Because in Switzerland, 2,500 Swiss francs is the purchasing power for, let's say, 1,200 US dollar or 1,200 euros. So there's all this misunderstanding and the media spread it. And in particular, abroad from Switzerland, people said, wow, 2,500 euro. This is a huge amount because people are not used to think by themselves. Again, we try to avoid it. But you see how media and the public are reacting. If you give them a number, they are just and only talking about numbers. Too high, too little, too whatever. If you give them a, a plan of financing, they are just talking about numbers. And why is it? Because people are used to be not able to think. But if they have numbers, they can calculate like a computer. They can compute it. They like that. They play. The energy of the, the idea, which is huge energy, goes into numbers. And then they are dealing with numbers and not thinking the idea. You don't need um, any tests of the idea. You can understand the idea or you don't. So this is my answer. We didn't do that. We avoided it as far as we could, but we couldn't fight against what was in the medias and it was done. And in the international media is even worse than in this one because in the international media it was not that purchasing power, which is very little in Switzerland. It was a huge amount for all the other countries because they took the exchange rate and obviously didn't know that an exchange rate does mean nothing. This is the answer, but this is how media is working. And look, it, it, it is everywhere. So Valeria, you are, yeah, that's nice to say. And I, I confirm that when we collected signatures, um, after a while, and this, I saw which people will sign. These are always those people who experience a break in their life, a breakdown, a break up. Any, any faith, any, any um, uh, what is the name of it? Any accident, so a divorce, somebody died, or whatever. And women experienced that much more and of more often than me. So that, that they, when people fall back to their existence and having no position, are not uh, carried by the structure of the society where there are a doctor or whatever. People has fallen back to themselves, experienced that they are just a human being. They are more open for an idea of an unconditional basic income. And those are very close for it, against it, who are living in these traditional forms where they are successful. And this way, yeah, women signed um, more likely than men. Now, um, Michele, your question, bankers. Well, when you talk, talked about it, one idea came in my brain I forgot to tell. Um, for me, it was important if there are people who just take your time by arguing against basic income or um, doing as if they are interested, but you feel they are not, they don't want to, to have to do with it really. They are, they are not asking you really. I stopped coming immediately. I have no time for it. You know, I have things to do. I have no time for people who just want to have a little chat with you, to have a little exciting chat, be against basic income, not interested in the topic. When I felt that people are interested, maybe angry, maybe against, but really interested, I talk with them. I don't know what's with those people, but that's important for me because you lose, you waste so much time 
is people just like to chat and discuss and are not really interested. Stop it. We are worker. We are having our job. We are not private time wasting guys. And for bankers, um, two things, two points. I try to be brief. I have a friend, he's natural. He is really a pit bull. You know, he's biting, he's so horrible, he's really worse. He's what a manager is at the very <laughs> worst picture, but he's a friend of mine. And what are you doing there? And I said, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm doing, yeah, it's not interesting for you. It's unconditional basic income for everybody. You know, you don't need it, you earn enough. And he said, what? How can you say that? It's interesting for me, if there would be such a thing like an unconditional basic income for everybody, I would, I would rethink whether this is meaningful what I, I do. Maybe I will change and, and, and focus my capacities to something different if there's an unconditional basic income. And that, I think, is a, is a real argument for many people who are very capable on a high level in banks or whatever, enterprises, and if there is an unconditional basic income and, and, and the, the understanding of what's valuable, what is value, what is human being is changing, maybe more of those high capable people, and often they are, are focused on different things with an unconditional basic income. And for a banker, so for example, it could be an argument that if there's an unconditional basic income, they can rethink what the purpose of a banker is. And that is a huge big thing. That is to look at the money from those who have to make goes to those who have to less. That's, the, that the, that's, that's what they have to do. This is a social work. They have to be very open-minded and experienced to see what's valuable. What idea is really good for society and the future of humankind? And how can we support that? That is what, what the job of a banker is. And not to make people rich who are also always rich. And the other thing is, it can, but, but that often it doesn't, it doesn't um, uh, work. You can say, look, um, with non control basic income, everybody has a basic income. So the task of... Uh, giving people the basics is no no longer the task of enterprises, and that means um, the payment of work is lower than today. That means it's more flexible. On the other hand, it means people can decide more about what they think is valuable. It becomes a more dynamic, more vibrant society, and also um, working as a bank will become more open for more creativity. Uh, wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, dear Anno, I would like to ask to dear Angel. Angel, uh, do we have time? Very really interesting discussions are ongoing. Dear Angel? Yeah, okay, okay. Go Can on. we continue a little bit more if Anno is also uh, kindly accepts? Okay. Okay, uh, dear Anno, there are uh, two more questions in the chat box, but in the meantime, I would like to ask uh, dear Klaus, uh, chairperson of the ECI UBI coordination uh, team. Dear Klaus. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, for me, it's very interesting to hear all your arguments, and I agree in most of all your uh, uh, things. Uh, one question for me is, uh, I also are of the opinion that the direct discussion on the street would be very nice and uh, signatures and so on. But at the moment, could you help us with any idea? Because at the moment we have lockdown, cannot go on the street asking yeah. people for signatures and to discuss with them. Well, um, not, not, not specifically, Klaus, but when I saw the German translation, um, there was a wrong translation of, of, um, of one word and I wrote back to the organizer and, and they said, no, it's just translated. So the only suggestion in the moment at all is look carefully that it is written in each language accurate for the people, not to be too, too, too quick and don't look to, that has to be the right word. That was one point. And the other, I think you, you are doing a great job and the initiative and everything is very fine and it's very public and, and well spread. And it's just in general that I repeat that for me, um, well, 
a campaign has to feed those who are campaigning. An initiative has to feed the people who are doing the initiative, otherwise you die by starvation. And I experienced many initiatives dying by starvation. And what's what I mean? What I mean is you have to have joy in it. You have to get your spiritual and mental food. So not looking to the goal as this has to this has to be achieved. Doing everything for achieving the goal, of course, but look into the way, to your path, to your steps, looking to where you are, having the joy of this great idea we can fight for, this beautiful gift that we can do things for this idea of an unconditional basic income. And so having, not depending too much on a far goal and, and, and spreading this atmosphere also in the campaign for the people. So that's what I said in the beginning, that there's always a, an up, a step up. So it's not heavy, it is up. And that's life. And that's bright. And that is, yeah, that needs beauty and that needs a sense of humor. That's, that needs to take yourself not too serious. On the other hand, you have to take everything very serious. And for me, you made that very well in this campaign. Uh, thank you, Tirano. There are three questions, uh, Javier, Ayhan Baha, and Azam. Uh, but uh, dear Angel, uh, do you need to close the session because of the other one? No, no, we, we can we can take a, one more 15 minutes, for example. Uh, dear Angel, is it acceptable from your side? Uh, of course. Yeah, that's great. Uh, Javier, uh, you have a question in the chat box, but would you like to ask directly? Yeah. Yes, I have please. written a question. Shall I repeat again? Uh, would you please? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so then I'm uh, taking part in the organization or uh, in the promotion of the income um, in the in the initiative for the in basic income from Spain and from Germany. And usually, I always or I always hear how to finance it many times at every time we take part in some place. And for a couple of weeks ago, I started asking what happened. For example, I hear that in France, that they have been put a 50 million penalty to Google because they haven't complied the legislation of France. So in this way, I hear a professor for the other day of the University of Kassel, and they are preparing a data protections for the European Union. So if these companies in the future, they want to sell something in Europe, they will have to count on paying tax, not according to the American system, but according to the European Union. And this is something that we have to think of this because this will, uh, they will, uh, they will make, make easy to convince people of about for those that are not ready to pay more and therefore the, in the end the tax the fiscal system in the european union most of the countries in the end those they have the power they don't pay the tax they should and then in the end the ordinary people have to pay the tax and when we talk in this we are waiting for signatures the ordinary people will be more joy uh, enjoying the matter if we from the beginning we are telling with the time those companies are going to pay for the income basic income in the european union do you think it's an idea i mean well um i don't want to argue again with that because this is a strong argument and we have to change this to the power of this global um enterprises and they they avoid taxes and so on so my own position in this regard is that we have to come away from income taxes from taxing income so the people have the money and then come and want to tax it and we have to 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 see that all taxes are included calculated incorporated in the prices and the consumer is paying for it it's, it 
If you buy a product, the income taxes are part of the price you're paying. And this is for me a new understanding compared to um, a parallel to basic income to see we as a sovereign, the population, are paying taxes. Everybody is doing that by consuming. Because the money you are paying for a product is the money that the company can give further on to the state and, and to the employees and they pay income tax from that. I think it's, 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 um, it's an illusion that you can tax the rich one more. We try that since 100 years and it's less and less. I think we have to renew our understanding of taxes and to see that paying taxes is not a penalty. Paying taxes means that you are a sovereign citizen and you, you pay for what you are ordered. To have a step in the direction of democracy, for me it's necessary that people exactly know that hey, everybody is paying taxes. Also the very poor ones are paying taxes in real. But they are told that there is a justice that higher incomes is taxed higher. But the higher income, including the higher taxes on it, is the price of the product. So the consumer are paying it. And that's the reason for me to say everybody gets an unconditional basic income that makes the people free. And everybody pays for it. That makes the social cohesion and sovereignty and the dignity of the people. So for me, myself, uh, there's a different understanding of tax. Pay tax is dignity, is participating as, as a sovereign member of society. And not paying taxes is feudalism, is an understanding of those with the money have to give the money to those who are poor and the poor does not need to pay, but then they does not have to say something. So for me, it's necessary to have a step further on in the future to understand that in, in particular globally, you cannot decide who makes the biggest performance and gets just income. That's all stupid stuff. For me, taxes today, and if you look to it carefully, you will see it, are part of the money we spend for services and products. The consumers are paying for it. Entrepreneurs don't pay taxes. Enterprises don't pay taxes because they have no money. They have only the money from the consumers, from the customers. And that is we. So the whole society, the whole population, we, the society, should be aware that we pay for what we order. If we order an unconditional basic income, we want that because we are convinced it, for it, then we should see that they, we pay for it. And then you have a tax, if that is, for example, a consumption tax, you have a tax that the people cannot run away from. Then you have no tax avoidance. So if you try to, to get Google or whatever to pay taxes by consumption tax, then they have to lower the prices because they become expensive if they have such big profit. And then you have this understanding that taxes is a good thing. So we legitimize what we are tax, tax what we levy to tax. So it, it's needed for me to become aware that tax is a part of our just and legitimate society and it, it's part of our dignity as, as um, citizens to pay the taxes. It is not to avoid taxes because it's only for a government we don't like. And for me, it's a trap to always look to the rich one. It is feudalism in the understanding that those on the high mountains in their castles have to pay taxes because they took the money from us and then they have more. And then we are asking them to give a little bit back. No, if we are against such rich companies and such immense rich people, we have to change the laws. We have to think about a, a different understanding of property, that enterprises never can be private property, of course not, but not because we are against so people, but it's wrong, it's not logical. We have to change the abilities to become so unshamed rich if you are against it. We don't have to get some blackmail money for the population in form of taxes. That is much little. So if we are against that, with the right to be against it, then we have to change the law. And avoid people can get so many profit and benefit from the work of others. So that we have to change things in our society together with those who are the directors of those, to have an understanding of one human family and that we all want to have a good society. That's my understanding for, for it, from it. 
and by that the the claim of taxing the rich or taxing the multinational companies is um, for me no future I, I know it will not happen because they have more power they spend millions for lawyers to avoid taxes you cannot come after them and in Germany the tax on on wealth was award was was cancelled it was too expensive because rich people have enough money to avoid tax and to go behind them to get them to detective all this no we have to change the rules uh, you know, there are two more questions and maybe a contribution from Eva Maria uh, Ayhan Baha and Özlem would you like to share your questions and then contribution from Eva Maria and then maybe you can conclude the session of today I am Baha uh, yes, I am here. Uh, oh, hello, and, uh, hello. Yes, yes, I am here. I just wanted to say that um, yes, uh, taxation is all right, but uh, for example, if you have a government when they spend that, they put their pockets, uh, uh, our money. I don't like it. Me not too, Eva Maria. <laughs> <laughs> this is a problem, you know. Yeah, that is a problem. It's a, but you see, Eva Maria, you see, and this is a problem where you see that democracy and UBI is um, something like um, a couple. Yes, should be. Is, is, be. is, yes. and we have to make it clear and to, to, and, um, to improve democracy. We work on it in Hungary, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Ayhan Moha? Yes, thanks very much. Uh, to get my voice. Yes, yes, please yes. continue. Okay, okay. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Anna Schmidt uh, for his comments and uh, presentation. Uh, it was very good for us uh, to, to affect uh, and uh, to make some impact on our own opinions, uh, which is which is very much important. So my question is uh, for uh, the referendum uh, realized in uh, Switzerland, uh, you said that uh, 100,000 uh, riches are collected and that is why the referendum is realized in Switzerland. But I think it is by means of constitution in Switzerland. So no other countries have got some kind of uh, uh, pre pre uh, pre uh, prefixes to realize referendum in their own sovereign land. So, what do you think about that? To uh, to realize this kind of activities, any country all over the world. So, this is a way to obtain some political achievement to realize this country. This is yeah. one first. The second question, the second question is, and what happens in Switzerland after the referendum is realized? So Good question. There, there, should, yes. be, there should be some uh, amendments in the constitution and even the laws. So yes. thanks very much for your... Uh, for your and the last question from dear Özlem. Özlem? Please. Yes, thank, thank you. Uh, I would like to ask how did coronavirus uh, change the people's look to the basic income? And uh, would it be different if uh, the referendum was held after the coronavirus pandemic? Because so many people got, uh, lost their jobs and uh, they understood basic income uh, is very important for everyone. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. For this. And not to, yeah, I try to be brief. So thank you for this very important questions. Um, I start with yours about coronavirus. Um, I'm not so happy about the hype in argue, arguments for an unconditional basic income caused by the coronavirus because now it is again because of bitter need. It is um, to, to repair the damage of the lockdown. It is, it is not so easy now to see the idea of an unconditional basic income, which is focused on the human being, just appreciation of the human being. Now there is a gain that 
uh, circumstances, other reasons are more strong and people avoid always to look to the people, look to the human being. And coronavirus makes it easy to say, oh, now, and now we can misuse the basic income. You know, in my film, I, I said something in 2008, how to misuse it. And I see you can misuse an unconditional basic income by calling it unconditional basic income in real paying people to stay at home and to shut down, to keep your mouth using this not really unconditional not really for everybody for those who need it and then you have instrument for depression on the people calling it an unconditional basic income not really high enough to live from so that you depend on having a job and then can lower the amounts of wages massively because people need to work and they can work for a very low amount because the unconditional basic income so this huge idea which is a progress of human of humanity can misuse, can be misused. I'm very suspicious, suspicious that with the argumentation of coronavirus, it is much more in, in, in the discussion now. But what is it? Is it really an unconditional basic income that is high enough to live from lifelong without conditions, without that? Or is it now that people add need and bitter hardship to it and, and um, add uh, political strategies to that and it on the way on the new world order that people are staying at home hindered to take part in creating a better world so is it to pay people for not working this is sometimes a fact today you know it is very dangerous so that is what i think the hype for the basic income um prior to coronavirus is more a threat progress and if the referendum would have been now with coronavirus i think that there would be no more voices for it because finally it does it does not convince people for unconditional basic income that now by the lockdown and the loss of jobs we need an unconditional basic income for everybody. Say, okay, we need these measures of the of of, um, of, of um, packages for benefit packages for the people, but but not for everybody. So the real thinking about unconditional basic income does not come further with the coronavirus. That's my experience. But you, now you can take the idea of an unconditional basic income, calling it like that, because people believe by their deepest soul in this unconditional basic income, because this is to be aware about human being. And it can be misused to keep people away from work, away from doing good things, to, to, to destroy social relationships and social life and all this stuff and say, well, you have an unconditional basic income, stay at home. You know, it's more threat for me. But the discussion is changing a lot now. And it's not just a joy. So on the other hand, it becomes more known what is good. But that is not, there are two sides of the of this paper. So Ayan. Um, yes. Again, your question. You. Give Thank me you. a hint. Give me a hint again. You, you, Okay. Can you a brief, a brief repeat. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, uh, what happens after the referendum? After, uh, referendum? okay. First, that yes. after the referendum, that is, that was like you have had a huge party, and after mm. the party, everybody is drunk, everybody is exhausted, and nothing happened. It was silence, and it's still silence. So Switzerland, you know, it was really huge. The whole world was looking. And the Swiss people discussed it and, and so on and so on. And we made the campaign. So the people in Switzerland by themselves are very conservative. They don't think that they need an unconditional basic income. Um, so it was a huge, huge, um, powerful thing to do that. And after the referendum, we decided that we don't continue. So we are not a, a, a club always running in the same direction we are focused on the referendum and then it was over and everybody did what what they did and so in switzerland the lights were switched out and <laughs> the boxes were switched out and there was nothing 
But when you push the, the idea in a society, then it is, it is growing. It is going under the floor. It is here and it is there. And today there are much more people for an unconditional basic income than before the Green Party is for it and so on. And I think Switzerland will not be the first country to implement a basic income because they are always a little bit behind of the time. So, you know, right to vote for a woman was in Switzerland 1974 and in one canton 1992. They will, be not, they will not be the first, but we took the chance to spread the idea worldwide of the abilities of Switzerland of direct democracy. So yes. that was this one. And now in this year, there is a new initiative for basic income in Switzerland. And this, I, I don't believe so much in that, but there is in, in the canton of Zurich, two sections in Zurich, the people voted with a majority for an unconditional basic income in 2016. And there are politicians from Zurich, from the canton, local government and so on, who made um, a suggestion and a mention in the, in the local parliament to start with an unconditional basic income pilot project in those sections of Zurich where a majority was in favor for a basic income. So this is seriously going on. And I think this is a way of Switzerland that there are more such um, initiatives on the local or community level for pilot projects for basic income. And the real true Swiss way would be to implement it silence, in silence and then to say, oh, we have it already. So Switzerland is always a bit calm down, be silent, you know. And so a little bit is happening now again. And I think the path of Switzerland is to implement it in that valley, behind that mountain, in this little city, and then like a, like a curtain comes up. And you other question, give me a hint. Uh, no, it was about, uh, about democracy, huh? No, other countries, what they can do. Yeah, no. what they can do where they have no... Yes, if yes. they don't have the uh, condition in their yes. constitution. Mm. Um, first of all, I think, for example, Diana knows it, in the United States you have the opportunity of um, people's initiatives and people votes in states, in cities, and that's in other countries too. And often people don't know what the law is, 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 is um, providing. Requires, requires, yes. Well, I, I don't know whether this is, where are you from? Istanbul, Turkey. Ah, yeah, you don't have that, huh? Yeah, we don't. So far not, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you have to find other ways. I, I don't know that, but I think in general, um, the approval of democracy is is together with the idea of an unconditional basic income. Because I think it, it's not so good if, for example, Ali becomes a dictator of Turkey and he implements a basic income, whether they want or not, that's not so good. It needs to come from, from the bottom. It needs to come from the here from, from the holy people which is the population. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I have three slides, but uh, if you do kindly wait for the third slide, it's very interesting, I guess. Uh, let me share. Uh, where are the slides? Here are they. Oh, okay. F first of all, we would like to thank our uh, Spanish friends, uh, the Angel and the UBI network from Spain. Uh, regarding the uh, Zoom infrastructure. Uh, our next meeting, uh, I mean, the best practices during UBI advocacy meeting will be held on 21st of December. Uh, and our guests will be Valentin Reimer and Caroline Schaeffer. Uh, the topic will be white uh, work site idea. Uh, the next worldwide meeting will be on uh, 24th of November. Uh, details will be shared with you by email. But I would like to show you another slide. I think it's uh, very good news these days. Okay, Eduardo is with us. Eduardo, mm, are you here, Eduardo? Dear Eduardo? Yes, I'm here. Okay, uh, hey, I'd like to congratulate you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, uh, well, I'd like to tell you that uh, Yesterday we had a 
city council elections and, uh, and for mayors of the cities in Brazil. And uh, fortunately, uh, I was the most elected uh, city councilman in the city of Sao Paulo, 107, 167,552 votes, the, uh, the largest vote for, and, and so the, the second place was 132. So there were more than 2,000 candidates and, uh, and 6,354,000 people voted. So uh, you may say that uh, the proposal of a basic income is still high here in Sao Paulo. And That's I have right. another, I, another good news is that you know that the city of Marica is uh, uh, experiencing uh, a basic income uh, and uh, one fourth of the population started to receive. By the end of this year, half of the population will be receiving and... Uh, uh, dear Eduardo. And, uh, and Jess, I, I'm finishing. Okay. And by 2024, all of the population and the mayor who has uh, started this had been voted again with 88% of the votes in that seat. So that's very good news as well. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Eduardo. Great. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Well. Uh, dear Ando, thank you very much. Uh, it was a very interesting meeting. I guess all friends are happy. It was very beneficial. Hope to see you within our next meeting. Thanks, Ali. Thank you, Angel. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. You. thank, you, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Have a good night. Angel, we are sorry that we are about half an hour late. But it yeah, was no very interesting. Hello, Yeshim. No I didn't see you at the meeting. Welcome. Ivan. Thank John you. Bye Oh, Diana Bashur was here. Papatia Tabak, Johnny. Okay, too many friends. Nice to see you all. Dear class, hope to see you uh, during the coordination meeting. Bye bye. Thank you. Eduardo, Good. once again, congratulations. Bye bye. Uh, Thank you very much. We, we, I'm sorry I came late today. So. Mm, no problem. Luckily, we were late that we were able to see you. Thank you very much. Okay. Oh, Noyan Abi. Oh, Noyan Abi, welcome. Uh, sh should we close, Angel? When you close, I yep. guess the session will be closed. I'm going to close. I'm